CIET NCERT presents audiobook of geography for class 6 entitled The Earth Our Habitat This is the lesson number 7 Our country India From page number 47 to page number 55 Let's listen to the lesson number 7 Our country India Page number 47 India is a country of vast geographical expanse. In the north, it is bound by the lofty Himalayas, the Arabian Sea in the west, the Bay of Bengal in the east, and the Indian Ocean in the south, wash the shores of the Indian Peninsula. India has an area of about 3.28 million square kilometres. The north-south extent from Kashmir to Kanyakumari is about 3,200 kilometres and the east-west extent from Arunachal Pradesh to Kutch is about 2,900 kilometres. The lofty mountains, the great Indian desert, the northern plains and the uneven plateau surface and the coasts and islands present a diversity of landforms. There is a great variety in the climate, vegetation, wildlife as well as in the language and culture. In this diversity, we find unity that is reflected in traditions that bind us as one nation. India has a population of more than 120 crores since the year 2011. It is the second most populous country of the world after China. Locational setting India is located in the northern hemisphere. The Tropic of Cancer, 23 degree 30 minutes north, passes almost halfway through the country as shown in figure 7.2. From south to north, mainland of India extends between 8 degree 4 minutes north and 37 degrees 6 minutes north latitudes. From west to east, India extends between 68 degrees 7 minutes east and 97 degrees 25 minutes east longitudes. If we divide the world into eastern and western hemispheres, which hemisphere would India belong to? Due to great longitudinal extent of about 29 degrees, there could be a wide differences in local time of places located at two extreme points of India. As such, the differences between these two points would be of about two hours. Page number 48 As you have learnt earlier, the local time changes by four minutes for every one degree of longitude. The sun rises about two hours earlier in the east that is Arunachal Pradesh, than in the west, that is Gujarat. You have already read earlier why the local time of longitude of 82 degrees 30 minutes east has been taken as the Indian Standard Time. The meridian or longitude is also termed as the Standard Meridian of India. India's Neighbours There are seven countries that share land boundaries with India. Find out names. Figure 7.1 shows India and its neighbouring countries. We see India shares its borders with Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar and Sri Lanka. Page number 49 Figure 7.2 shows a political map of India wherein Telangana became the 29th state of India in June 2014. For the references we see International Boundary, State Boundary, Himachal Pradesh, Tripura, Capital City, National Capital, Delhi. Page number 50. Find out names of these countries from the figure 7.1. How many of these countries do not have access to any oceans or sea? Across the sea to the south lie our island neighbours, Sri Lanka and Maldives. Sri Lanka is separated from India by the Park Strait. Political and Administrative Divisions India is a vast country. For administrative purposes, the country is divided into 29 states and 9 union territories. As shown in Appendix 1, Delhi is the national capital. The states have been formed mainly on the basis of languages. 
Figure 7.3 shows India's physical divisions. We can see mountain or hill ranges, mountain region, plateau region and plain region. We have the great Himalayas, Shivalik, Northern Plains, Brahmaputra River, Yamuna River, Ganga River, Chambal River, Great Indian Desert, Aravani Range, Vindhya Range, Narmada River, Tapi River, Satpura Range, Mahanadi River, Godavari River, Western Ghat, Coastal Areas, Deccan Plateau, Godavari River, Krishna River, Eastern Ghats, Coastal Areas, Nilgiri, Anaimalai, Kaveri River. We see Gulf of Khambat, Gulf of Kutch. All of these comprise India's physical features. Page number 51. Physical Divisions. India is marked by a diversity of physical features such as mountains, plateaus, plains, coasts and islands. Standing as sentinels in the north are the lofty snow-capped Himalayas. Him plus Alai mean the abode of snow. The Himalayan mountains are divided into three main parallel ranges. The northernmost is the Great Himalaya or Himadri. The world's highest peaks are located in this range. Middle Himalaya or Himachal lies to the south of Himadri. Many popular hill stations are situated here. Find out the names of five hill stations. The Shivalik is the southernmost range. The northern Indian plains lie to the south of the Himalayas. They are generally level and flat. These are formed by alluvial deposits laid down by the rivers, the Indus, the Ganga, the Brahmaputra and their tributaries. These river plains provide fertile land for cultivation. That is the reason for high concentration of population in these plains. In the western part of India lies the Great Indian Desert. It is a dry, hot and sandy stretch of land. It has very little vegetation. To the south of Northern Plain lies the Peninsular Plateau. It is triangular in shape. The relief is highly uneven. This is a region with numerous hill ranges and valleys. Aravli Hills, one of the oldest ranges of the world, border it on the northwest side. The Vindhyas and the Satpuras are the important ranges. The rivers Narmada and Tapi flow through these ranges. These are west-flowing rivers that drain into the Arabian Sea. The Western Ghats or Sahedris border the plateau in the west and the Eastern Ghats provide the eastern boundary. While the Western Ghats are almost continuous, the Eastern Ghats are broken and uneven as shown in figure 7.3. The plateau is rich in minerals like coal and iron ore. To the west of the Western Ghats and the east of the Eastern Ghats lie the coastal plains. Alluvial deposits. These are very fine soils brought by rivers and deposited in the river basins. Tributary. A river or stream which contributes its water to a main river by discharging it into main river from either side. As shown in figure 6.1. Do you know, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra form the world's largest delta, the Sundarbans Delta. The delta is triangular in shape. It is an area of land formed at the mouth of the river, where rivers enter the sea. That point is called the mouth of the river, as shown in figure 6.1. Let's do. Many girls are named after rivers, example Yamuna, Mandakini and Kaveri. Do you know anyone in your locality who is named after a river? Ask your parents and others and make a list of such names. Could you also find other names related to water? Example, Shabnam? Page number 52. The western coastal plains are very narrow. The eastern coastal plains are much broader. There are a number of east-flowing rivers. The rivers Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri drain into the Bay of Bengal. These rivers have formed fertile deltas at their mouth. The Sundarban Delta is formed where the Ganga and Brahmaputra flow into the Bay of Bengal. 
Do you know, corals are skeletons of tiny marine animals called polyps. When the living polyps die, their skeletons are left. Other polyps grow on top of the hard skeleton which grows higher and higher, thus forming the coral islands. Figure 7.4 shows coral islands. Here's a poem written by Aparna Sinha of 9th Standard. The title of the poem is Danger Waters. Down there in Sumatra started a big quake, but no one had expected the tsunami it did make. Waves big as mountains like an army they charged, and into the South Asian lands with all might they barged. Full with fury, they killed people in thousands and destroyed everything from buildings to farmlands. The waves came and went from Sumatra to other places and left nothing there except empty spaces. People were left without shelter and food. Tourists who had come decided they never should. People lost their loved, near and dear ones. Survivors snatched and fought for clothes and buns. Relief to the affected was being sent out. But now of disease there was a big bout. People feared going near the sea. Could it swell up again, giving no time to flee? The fear installed in them may stay by the days. But in this darkness of sorrow, there's still a happy ray. Page number 53 we can also see a painting by Vedant Swain of Fourth Standard titled Tsunami's Killer Waves. Page number 54. Two groups of islands also form part of India. Lakshadweep Islands are located in the Arabian Sea. These are coral islands located off the coast of Kerala. The Andaman and the Nicobar Islands lie to the southeast of the Indian mainland in the Bay of Bengal. Do you know which group of islands were affected by the tsunami in 2004? Find out through newspaper reports and by speaking to people how in different ways people faced this challenge when tsunami struck the Indian coast. Tsunami is a huge sea wave generated due to an earthquake on the sea floor. Exercises 1. Answer the following questions briefly. A. Name the major physical divisions of India. B. India shares its land boundaries with seven countries. Name them. C. Which two major rivers fall into the Arabian Sea? D. Name the delta formed by the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. E. How many states and union territories are there in India? Which states have a common capital? F. Why do a large number of people live in the northern plains? G. Why is Lakshadweep known as a coral island? 2. Tick the correct answers. A. The southernmost Himalayas are known as 1. Shivaliks 2. Himadri 3. Himachal B. The Sahyadras is known as 1. Aravali 2. Western Ghats 3. Himadri C. The Park Strait lies between the countries 1. Sri Lanka and Maldives 2. India and Sri Lanka 3. India and Maldives D. The Indian Islands in the Arabian Sea are known as 1. Andaman and Nicobar Islands 2. Lakshadweep Islands 3. Maldives Page number 55 E. The oldest mountain range in India is the 1. Aravali Hills 2. Western Ghats 3. Himalayas 3. Fill in the blanks A. India has an area of about dash B. The greater Himalayas are also known as dash C. The largest state in India in terms of area is dash D. The river Narmada falls into the dash C. E. The latitude that runs almost halfway through India is dash. Map skills. 1. On an outline map of India, mark the following. A. Tropic of Cancer. B. Standard Meridian of India. C. State in which you live. D. Andaman Islands and Lakshwadeep Islands. 
E. Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats. The chapter 7 of total 8 chapters of the book ends here. Narrator Vasundhara Poos. Producer Vimlesh Chaudhary. Presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India.